Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. It is no secret that prices right now in the FIBA 23 market are absolutely crazy. They just keep going up. Every single day we look at the market and prices just keep going higher and higher. And we've been talking about this and looking at this, but what I really want to do is take a deep dive today into why the market is as high and why prices are as high as they actually are in this game because for most of us it doesn't make sense but if we dig into some of the details it kind of actually does if you take a look at it on a couple different levels this game has changed a lot in the past couple of months and even ea themselves have reported that recently to tell us some more information of why this market might be going up as much as it is. So I'm going to take that information, put some of what we know about FIFA in general, and just kind of talk about the market today, just a little bit extra. Obviously, we talk about the market in every single video, but today I want to look at the massive price rise that we have had since Team of the Year. And of course, what's going to happen? When is the drop? When is the crash? Could it be this weekend? Could it be in two weeks? Will we have to wait until March? That's what I want to discuss a little bit in today's video as well. Just as a lot of you guys, I'm sure, have tradable cards in your team and you're like, Nate, what should I do with this stuff? I don't want to lose a lot of coins because right now I'm making a lot because the market is up so much. So we're going to talk a lot about that, but of course, talk about Wednesday content, what to expect today on the game. New team of the week, probably a new token dropping in Silver Stars objective mode. And we do have another leaked youngster, Future Stars player SBC that's a pretty big name from a pretty big club. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, SBC upcoming as well. So if you're excited for the video today, hit the thumbs up and of course subscribe if you're new. Let's talk about this market because you guys know it's no secret. We talk about every single day how high these prices are and how much they have gone up since team of the year ended. Now there's a market rise after team of the year every single year. That is not uncommon. What I want to do is I want to show you this winter wild card to Anthony Martial from last year. This is a card that we looked at earlier this year before team of the year started. Last year at this exact same time, the same thing happened with the market, right? It was low before team of the year. You had a nice big sell-off and a market crash. Everybody opens up their packs. They get coins. They go back out and they buy cards. Anthony Martial went from 530 all the way to 640,000 coins during team of the year. Stayed there during future stars, went up a little bit more to almost 700K. And that's kind of where we are in this market right now. We are up big. Everything, as you look around, is crazy, crazy high. I mean, look at this graph. Mbappe was 9 million coins when the full team came into packs. Now my guy is 12 mil. It is crazy. Some of these cards are even extinct on PC. That's how high the market is. And we can take a look at some lower tier cards too. I think about... Um, the Danny Carvajal right back card, one of the best right backs in La Liga. This guy was 70K, 70K when Team of the Year started. And now he has basically doubled in price and then some. Um, of course, he was 180K before the Vonderson SBC came out and some other SBCs came out last week. Everything on this market is just up. And that's normal for this time of the year. But the amount that we have seen it go up is what is crazy. I mean, I could show you so many graphs and we could look at cards all day. Uh, that have just absolutely exploded. Aldo Weyron from 560 all the way to 800,000 coins. Now, of course, we're looking at some really, really meta cards and some really popular players. But again, like I showed with the Carvajal, Hall, it goes across the whole market. So reason number one the market is up is because this time of the year, it always goes up after team of the year. A big pack-based promo where people who saved up packs, which a lot of us did, right? When you save up packs, especially some of them being tradable, that brings coins to the market. And then from there, people go out and do SBCs and they open more packs, maybe even with coins. But what they do is they build a team and so many people have sold their team before team of the year that then they go get more coins after team of the year starts. They go out and they buy players back. They buy new players with their coins that they have gotten from opening up packs. And boom, that's where the market market rise usually happens. But there's a couple things. And what I mentioned in the, in the intro that EA has been showing us some metrics about how more players have been playing FIFA than ever. I think that is the reason number two, why this market has gone exponentially higher than what we usually see in this time of the year. And especially with the prices on the market that we're seeing right now, I think it explains a lot. This is info from EA's latest conference call. You're like, Nate, you're going full accountant on us here. I am, but this is really interesting information. They have said that FIFA 23 is paced to be the biggest title in franchise history, delivering record engagement. And this is a pretty kind of centralized stat, but in North America alone, unit sales are up 50% year over year. And a unit sale, what they're talking about here is the sale of the FIFA copy or the FIFA game, right? That's not, you know, FIFA points or in-game purchases. That's the unit, the FIFA unit. And if you take a look at their financial statements as well, we're going really nerdy here. 
EA, com uh, compared to last year, 400 full game downloads. This is millions, $400 million in full game downloads. This year, 423, but look how much bigger that is from all of the other months. And they, of course, mentioned it in the transcript. You see I have hi highlighted here World Cup. They talked a lot about the World Cup having a massive impact on this game and on this market. And we saw this actually earlier this year around the Christmas time frame. We saw the market have a really, really nice rise from the actual day. Like Christmas Day was a really low point for the market. Mbappe was 700,000 coins. And then the market roared back into the late December, early January time period before Team of the Year still, uh, after like the whole Christmas time period and Winter Wild Cards when it was ending. I think a lot of people got onto this game during the World Cup, after the World Cup, and of course over the holidays. And with the hype of everything that's gone on in the world of football, with the World Cup again, and, uh, you know, EA promoting the game a lot at the World Cup, and of course people getting the game at this time of the year in general, I think there are just so many more people playing this game of FIFA right now this year than there usually are at this time of the year. And, you know, we always know this and we always talk about this, right? That World Cup years are always big years for this game and for prices on this game and, and just engagement in FIFA because there are so many more people that are playing FIFA and talk about it because they watch you know football and they see the games being played and I really think that's driving so much engagement right now in this game which is pushing prices higher and higher. So we've seen it from EA themselves, there's more people that have bought the game and that are playing the game and the cross console market this year, especially for some of these top tier, very meta overpowered players, People know what's meta. People want to have the best cards. This is called ultimate team for a reason. Try to build the best team you possibly can. And a lot of us are building into that in our own ways, depending on how many coins we have, how much time you play, and all that stuff. There's so many factors. But people always gravitate towards the meta. And you look at some of the meta cards, like the Lucio, like the Yaya, like the Mbappe that we've been looking at. These are the cards that are up the most percentage-wise because they have the most demand. And, of course, with the cross-console market this year, I really think that some of the top tier meta cards have gone up exponentially more than in years past because there are two different sides vying for still a very limited number of top tier cards on this game, especially think about pros, think about elite plus players and just, you know, really hardcore players on FIFA that just pushes those top tier cards higher and higher. So the market's extremely high right now. I and I just think it's because there's a lot of hype around FIFA. Now you might be like, Nate, this Future Stars promo has been kind of an L. And you're not wrong in saying that. There's been cool cards, but you know, think about the team of the year grind and how many people were on the game. Especially, I like to J uh, gauge the number of people that are on FIFA by this live transfers number here on the screen. During team of the year, and I'm, this is like nighttime right now, 8 million is a pretty high number for being later at night. This number during team of the year was like 12, 13 million coins or uh, live transfers. That's a lot of people on the game because that's a lot of active transfers on the market. So the market's alive and well, and that's why prices are doing so well. And of course, the biggest question is, Nate, when is this stuff going to drop? Well, let's take a look back at FIBA 22 cards to maybe paint a picture as to what could happen this year as well. I don't think it's exactly the same, of course, but Last year, during the second half of the Future Stars promo, the market absolutely died. We had that nice rise for uh, post-team of the year, right? This uh, Martial went from 530 all the way to 680, and then boom. We got a bunch of great content. We had so many gamble SBCs, party bags, player picks, icon SBCs, so much stuff, and so many other factors that the market absolutely died one weekend. It kind of just reached a tipping point as so much great content was out. That was our catalyst, right? And prices died. Tiago Jello, same thing. Nice rise in a team of the year, but then into February, boom, absolutely got destroyed. I don't know if we have to worry about that right now because nothing in this game right now is telling me that we have to be worried about a promo upcoming or content upcoming that is going to cause mass panic on this game, especially if there's a lot more hype and a lot more people playing the game, there might be less, um, you know, have less reasons to sell at the moment. So that's kind of where I'm at. I know that we've been talking about this part of the market that we are in right now is definitely 
a very high part. We are towards the top. We are near the peak, if you will. Could prices go higher the next couple of days? Yeah, they could go a little bit higher the next couple of days. Could prices also start to fall? Yeah, they could as well. But this period of this market being so insanely high is not going to last forever. Yes, the team of the year cards may hold their prices for a while. Look at this Neymar, 1.7 all the way to 3 mil. Like that's crazy, right? For the best version of Neymar in this game. But of course, that's a super meta card that people want to go out, get in their teams because it is Neymar, right? So I feel like we're just in a very, very, we're at the plateau almost, and we're going to stay here until something changes. You've heard, me, you've heard me say the word catalyst for a while now. There needs to be massive leaks, massive upcoming promo, massive SBCs on repeat, and just great content in general to make people want to sell. And right now, there is just none of that. So if you have cards in your team, know that this is probably near the peak. We are near the top. But also, if you guys bought these cards during uh, or before the beginning of team of the year, like if you bought Benzema for a million coins because you didn't uh, weren't able to afford his team of the year, and now this card's at 1.7, Let's say you sell them now for 1.7, you get your, all of your coins back and you sell at the peak time. What if you just held on to this Benzema for two to three more weeks? Maybe he goes back down to 1.4 million coins or 1.5 mil, but you get to use this card for another two or three weeks and he only use, loses maybe a little bit of that value. Kind of the, that, That's the situation that we're in right now. Yes, you could sell and sell at the best price, but then you're still losing out on a card that you really wanted to use. And it may not go down that much in the grand scheme of things just because so many more people are playing on this game than there were earlier in the year. Um, and there's still a lot of hype for a lot of these really meta cards. So it's a crazy thing that's going on with this market right now. And I think it's going to continue to be crazy and we're going to continue to follow it. But the bottom line is prices are crazy high and hopefully having this conversation helps you out a little bit in what you think you should do with your team. So one last thing I will mention is this weekend, there's some pro qualifier events that are going on. So I just looked at like Lucio and I looked at the team of the year Mbappe and like this World Cup Yaya Toure. Some of these cards have had an extra boost in price because there's even extra demand there for this like pro event and qualifiers that are going on. I do believe there could be a bit of a sell off with some of those pro cards. So if you own any like really expensive cards that are pro level cards, those could have a bit of a sell-off this weekend in general, so just be careful with that. But as of right now, no impending market crash unless EA turn this promo around and make it pretty crazy. Now, let's focus on content because yesterday was definitely not a crazy day of content. All that we had was a kit SBC and the Raquel May Talent Scout winner. Those EA tweets they were putting out of a poll, whether you wanted pace or dribbling or whether you wanted skill moves or a weak foot, well, Pace and skill moves ended up winning. This was the player that they were uh, talent scouting, right? And we got a five-star skill, three-star weak foot, Rodrigo Raquelme. Fun card, not very expensive, as it should not be. Uh, but I think it still is a little bit too expensive. I think it's coming in at like 70 or 80,000 coins uh, for two squads on the SBC. Again, fun card, nice future star item, just a little bit too expensive, but GG's EA, that's fun type of content, right? And that's how a lot of this promo has been. Not insane, just fun. And then yesterday, of course, we did have the refresh of the first owner Fiesta game mode. So if you went out and played some of your games there, um, make sure you got your swap tokens there. That's where the game, or that's where the swap tokens were yesterday. First owner Fiesta for winning one game and then completing the whole entire objective. We are up to 18 swap tokens in general. I know a lot of you guys know this, but just again, to go over this 18 tokens, that means we have 12 left for EA to drop in the next 10 days. Cause 10 days from now swaps program is over. So that's where the progress is right now on swaps. Now let's talk about today a little bit more because yesterday was a slowdown content and market continued to go higher, of course, as it always does when the content's not that great. We didn't get the Future Stars reunion player pick that I was really, really hoping for. EA didn't do it, which I'm honestly bummed about. And hopefully that we still see that SBC coming because honestly, that is an SBC that so many people would love to do, myself included. There'd be so many great cards potentially in that. Now, today on Wednesday, what I'm what else am I expecting? New tokens inside of Silver Stars, right? That's kind of the Wednesday token thing. Tuesdays, we get the gameplay through First Owner Fiesta. Wednesdays, we get the Silver Stars. So probably a new one of these today with probably two tokens available in that as well, taking us up to 20 tokens in total. And then also uh, a new team of the week, which we do have some team of the week predictions. And this is a relevant team of the week because there might be a pretty big name PSG player in here, Hakimi. 
I believe he had either a goal and assist, or maybe it was just an assist and a clean sheet, but uh, Hakimi could very well be getting an inform today, and if you have the Phenoms Hakimi, this might be a card that impacts his price. I don't know if it's going to be as good, probably won't be as good as the Phenoms card, uh, but it could impact the Phenoms just a little bit because that card is up a ton, and a new version comes on the market. Maybe people want to use this new inform that is a lot cheaper and maybe not as good, but still a lot cheaper. Uh, Kaylor Navas in here for a prediction on foot whiz foot bin i'm wearing the foot whiz kit that's why i got it mixed up but jordi alba kingsley coleman cold omani would be a great card to be a feature team of the week very deserved he needs a he needs a future star honestly maybe if ea don't put cold omani in this team of the week although he's probably deserving of it maybe he's in future stars so watch out for that and that could be a little ea trickery that we could read into today but watch out for team league 15 doesn't look that insane but the Akimi could make it a pretty nice, at least a nice, like, marquee player in the team of the week. And then for content today, you know, Wednesdays are not normally very big days for player SBCs. We had a player SBC yesterday with Raquel May. We do have a leak that I mentioned, and it's a pretty big leak because it's from a very big club, especially a club that has had a lot of hype with promo cards recently. Charles de Ketelera is added to come via SBC or during Future Stars. These are a predicted stats on this card, but... In my opinion, this could be a really, really fun card to use. If priced correctly and if given a skill move upgrade, he has the high and average plus body type, which is a very rare body type to have in-game in FIFA. And I think uh, that it would be very overpowered to have this guy with the five-star skills in game now if he doesn't have five star skills he'll probably still be really good to use great links with the milan links think about all the great ac milan players that are in fifa that you could use to link up with this card but hopefully this is a decent value i think it's not going to be that cheap it's a pretty big name for a future star to get an sbc so that's that's a gg from ea now hopefully the boosts are right and hopefully uh again the price is right as well but i really haven't seen a ton of like ac milan links go up a lot in price because of this um, you know, Teo Hernandez is, of course, up a lot in price in general, but I don't think there was a lot that, like, completely spiked like crazy yesterday for this league. Um, you know, guys like Leao, guys like Zlatan, I don't think that this um, SBC for De Ketelera is going to be anywhere near these guys in terms of um, their stats or price. But just kind of be careful with some of your AC Milan links as well, maybe some of your attackers in the Serie A. Serie A strikers, I mean, I feel like this guy could play multiple different areas on the pitch in the midfield. 65 defending potentially. His base card is 4-star, four 4-star, four uh, and has high, high work rates. So it could be a really nice SBC. I'm, I'm genuinely excited for this one because uh, it could be a really good Future Stars SBC player. So I don't know if that is today, but that is kind of like the only outstanding leak that we have for potential content that would be today on a Wednesday. Maybe there is still the opportunity for some sort of like party bag uh, or a player pick. But again, there's no new packs in the code as of right now. So it, it would, if it's a pack, it would have to take a code update for EA to put something like that into the game. Now they could release the 87 plus Winter Wildcard Centurion or Future Stars Team 1 player pick that's in the swaps rewards as an SBC. But that would be kind of crazy if EA did that while it's still available in rewards for future star swaps. I don't expect that, but technically that's possible. And that would kind of fit the bill of like a, a party bag player pick instead of a pack. So we'll just have to see, but I don't think EA is done yet, guys. I know last year they went all out with these player picks and packs. I just feel like there's still more to come with future stars in that regard, since it's been pretty quiet as of right now. Now, of course, we have to take a look at SBC fodder when we're talking about all of these SBCs and the potential for SBCs coming. And guess what? Fodder went up just a little bit more yesterday. 84s, 5.5k apiece, 86s, um, up a little bit more as well, 18K, 83s are at 1.6K for those. I mean, it's just kind of like slowly rising on some of this stuff. You know, even 91s back up to like 65K, they were 60K uh, at one point. The 90s were in the low 50s. Now they're about 55,000 coins. So there's no supply and still a lot of demand on these types of cars. So they just kind of keep slightly rising up now again 85 plus player pick refreshes today that could again make the 84 spike just a little bit so if you're having if you still have any of these or if you're trying to trade with any of these sell in the spike right you saw it yesterday these guys were all 6k they come back down a little bit content time with the refresh of that sbc is the best time to be selling your fodder um, and that's been a pretty common trend throughout the year this year now last two things i want to look at well actually last yeah last two things i want to look at uh we do have a player of the month 
that is uh, voting has started. And the reason why we're talking about this is because we had a Mbappe player of the month, right? I have not done the SBC. I'm not planning to do the SBC, but we might be entering in, in, into a time on FIFA where people are going to be having two League One player of the month up top as strikers in their teams. Now we have the Mbappe, right? Very expensive, 18 days left to complete this. I don't know when this SBC is going to drop, but the subsequent player of the month for the league on voting released yesterday and Wissam Ben Yedder is not only in the vote, he is the clear front runner based off of stats. Four goals, only 144 minutes played, by the way. That's pretty crazy. But four goals, Monaco had a really good month of January. Alexis Sanchez in the voting, he only had two goals. And uh, Frankowski, which would be a really nice link for Fofana, um, he also had two goals as a defender, which is you know pretty impressive. Um, but I, I feel like Ben Yedder's goal contributions and the fact that he's definitely going to win the fan vote from a FIFA perspective uh, is probably going to pull him to the front and he will end up winning the player of the month. Now, I don't know if the Ben Yedder and the Mbappe SBCs are going to overlap at all because this voting is probably going to end next week at the beginning of the week, probably next Monday or Tuesday. And then we would expect the SBC to be out late next week, basically a week from Thursday, a week from tomorrow. But Mbappe's SBC would still be available then. So I don't know if there's going to be overlap. I don't know if EA is going to wait until Mbappe goes away to bring Ben Yedder out. We might have both of those available at the same time, which is pretty crazy. But that's the news on the player of the month for League 1. And actually, before we go back, sorry for the transitions, double. Um, this is what Foot Sheriff tweeted about our next promo. Uh, this is honestly not a surprise to me at all. I don't even know if it's a leak. It's honestly common sense. We talked about it earlier in the week as well. Champions League, Europa League, and Conference League road to the finals are added as a rarity. Promo is expected to come soon. It just makes sense, right? And we've actually had all of these card designs, all but one of them. We haven't had the Conference League road to the final design, and we've looked at this already before. But all the other road to the final designs um, are in the quality search filter here, and they have been since the start of the game. So road to the final Champions League, road to the final Europa League. So those are already in there. And with Champions League and uh, Europa League starting here again really soon, we expect to see that promo next. So another week of future stars still to come, though. Don't get it twisted. Probably some more leaks for future stars coming pretty soon as well. It's been pretty quiet on that front from Foot Sheriff. And again, what I would have to say is, we talked about this just slightly with the Catalera. Be very careful. I know that we have the hope for like... Um, you know, Musiala to get a card inside of the Future Stars team too, or uh, Cavaradona, right, from Napoli to get a card. Be very careful investing in link investments with leaks because the market is so incredibly high right now. Some prices, yes, could go a bit higher, but other ones at the same time, you don't really want to get stuck with a card at this stage with prices being so high. If things downturn anytime soon, that would make the loss on the card even greater so just be very careful in that regard but there are still cards that could go up with leaks of like Musiala, Cavaradona, so many other great cards that could be leaked uh, incoming for future stars team number two so still be out there trading on the market I'm not trying to tell you the market's so high you can't buy anything I know it's really really high but also people are still buying cards at these prices because there's still demand on this game and people have coins that's part of the reason why the market is up so much so be out trading uh, I only found a couple cards yesterday that I wanted to flip in and out of still have a cob I'm trying to flip but it's a good time to be trading on the market as well when you see those fluctuations just have to know that make it sure it's a quick flips and don't hold the cards for forever especially if you're just trying to make profits because you don't want to get stuck but that's a long video today again there's just so much to talk about with this market and everything that's going on and i really wanted to bring an in-depth conversation to that today because i know that's so many people's question right now on this game what in the world's going on with the market so if you enjoyed this video today smash the thumbs up on it comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new it has been nathan foot account and i'll catch you guys later peace out